Catherine Knight. I'm the Assistant Deputy Director with the Department of Developmental Services. Uh, really excited to be here with you all to discuss workforce development, the DSP training stipend, and other initiatives. Next slide. We recognize that there is a nationwide workforce shortage and recruiting and retaining a knowledgeable, skilled workforce has become extraordinarily challenging. A shortage of direct service workers has direct impact on the individuals who depend upon their services. Uh, and there is no single solution. It's necessary to take a multifaceted approach to address these challenges. DDS has established several initiatives to address different areas of need and lay the foundation for future efforts to come. This includes addressing workforce development and stabilization, developing the quality incentives program, and identifying regional center performance measures. This is an ongoing process and we're glad for the opportunity to share this information. Next slide, please. The Budget Act of 2021 authorized funding to develop programs to enhance direct service worker wages and also improve the quality of services provided and consumer outcomes. These programs include DSP Workforce Training and Development, which is commonly referred to as DSP University, and the DSP Bilingual Differential. Both of these concepts were introduced with the rate models that followed the 2019 rate study by Burns and Associates. A work group comprised of over 32 members, including self-advocates, family members, service providers, regional centers, and other partners were engaged to provide input on the implementation of these two initiatives. Both DSP University and Bilingual Differential are projected to be available in the summer of 2023. Next slide, please. DSPs who can communicate in a language or medium other than English and who complete bilingual certification will receive a monthly pay differential. While the details are yet to be finalized, this differential will likely be an additional $100 per month when the DSP becomes certified. Bilingual uh, certification aims at building capacity of bilingual and multilingual staff within the intellectual and developmental disability service system and increasing regional center consumers access to staff who speak or communicate using their preferred language, including American Sign Language. We are working on contracting for management of a certification process to ensure DSPs are proficient in their languages. Through this initiative, we are building a list of bilingual DSPs throughout the state, which will be helpful in assessing where we have high or low capacity and need. Next slide. The DSP University is a three-tiered training and certification program for DSPs and frontline supervisors. This training and certification program supports the workforce with the creation of a career pathway, which also includes a pathway to increased wages. Though not yet finalized, the wage increase will likely be an additional one to $2 per hour for each completed tier of training. So if all three tiers are completed, an additional three to $6 per hour could be earned, which would apply to second or third jobs as well. DSP University provides access to quality job specific training for DSPs through standardized competency based training curriculum. Work has been done to establish core competencies and priorities for the program through engagement with the DSP workforce work group and we're working to establish a contract with an organization to manage the program identify resources for training content that's most relevant to DSPs and the developmental service system in California. Development of this career pathway will support recruitment and retention efforts, enhance quality of services provided, and foster improved consumer experience. DSP University will provide DSPs with transferable training experience and records. Rollout of this initiative will include future outreach to DSPs to help get the word out and bring awareness to this opportunity. Next slide. 
Based on projected regional center caseload growth, it's estimated that we will need to increase the workforce by approximately 33,000 DSPs and 2,700 regional center service coordinators over the next five years. While the workforce development initiatives are coming together for the next year, a short-term strategy is needed to stabilize the workforce. The Budget Act of 2022 authorized funding to develop programs related to the developmental services workforce stabilization, namely the DSP training stipend, DSP internship program, tuition reimbursement for regional center employees, and the pilot for remote supports using technology solutions, each of which I will cover uh, in a bit more detail on the next few slides, and all are anticipated to be available by the summer of 2023. These initiatives were authorized to help retain, restore, and support the frontline workforce. Next slide. Through the DSP training stipend, DSPs may receive up to two training stipends amounting to $500 each upon completion of authorized training courses. DDS has contracted with the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals, or NADSP, for training courses relevant to DSPs, which will be available online or on a mobile device. The first training offered will be on the DSP Code of Ethics by NADSP, which we are really excited to bring to you. DSPs will be able to choose the second training from a selection of available courses. This training stipend will have a soft rollout in January of 2023 with one regional center to ensure the online training platform is easily accessible to DSPs with full rollout anticipated shortly thereafter. We look forward to this being a good experience and are hopeful to have many DSPs participate. Next slide. The DSP internship program, which is similar to the paid internship uh, program, is geared towards creating new opportunities. This program is aimed at recruiting people to the developmental services system at entry level. A third party will manage recruitment and intern placement with service providers, allowing service providers to benefit from having interns while alleviating the burden of recruitment, onboarding, cost of wages, and other responsibilities. Interns benefit from exposure to a new service sector with a soft landing and quality training. We hope this leads to post-internship employment uh, for people who may not have otherwise found their way to developmental services. Intern wages were funded by the state for three months with funding that allows for retention stipends for post-internship employment. This program is anticipated to be available in 2023. Next slide. The tuition reimbursement program offers to, uh, tuition reimbursement for regional center employees who seek advanced degrees in a health or human services related field. This program is developed to support recruitment, retention, and career development for regional center employees and is aimed at enhancing the quality of services provided to those receiving regional center services. DDS is currently working with regional centers on the program specifications. Next slide. The pilot for remote supports is intended to test the feasibility of remote supports provided to individuals using tech, uh, technology solutions. There are so many technology solutions that can support people with having greater independence and as a result can reduce reliance on um, in-person direct supports. This pilot will support individuals to live more independent lives as all technology services will be based on the needs of that particular individual. Services can include things like sensors in the home and electronic um, medication dispensers. It can also provide instant on-call assistance in which the individual would use a handheld device like an iPad to connect with the call center. Staff at the call center would have the ab ability to converse with the individual and provide immediate assistance. There are so many 
potential innovations. A focus group has been working to scope the pilot and will be exploring criteria for selecting participants, for training providers, and how to protect um, participants' privacy, as well as measuring success. Next slide. The Quality Incentives Program is not new, so I won't spend a lot of time here, but I do want to tie this to the department's approach to to direct services workforce. The Quality Incentives Program for service providers has been established after a year of discussion with an active stakeholder work group. As you may remember, the Disability Thrive Initiative has brought several components of the Quality Incentives Program to you this year. In September, DDS presented on incentive programs for helping individuals achieve competitive integrated employment. Before that, in the June webinar on helping California address the DSP workforce crisis, DDS presented on the DSP workforce data collection survey. We received about 2,300 responses representing um, roughly 42% of service providers. Through the Quality Incentives Program, DDS is laying the foundation for collecting data needed to address workforce shortages, turnover rates, longevity, and language fluency. Next slide. Regional Center performance measures were launched in the fall of 2022. Aligned with the focus areas of the Quality Incentive Program for service providers, Regional centers are incentivized for building up their service coordinator capacity, knowledge, facilitation skills, and cultural competency. Again, I won't go into much detail here, but there is a link um, in case you'd like to learn more about this. The intent is really to illustrate the department's multifaceted approach to building the frontline workforce from all angles. Next slide. Uh, I'd like to again thank you for the opportunity to talk about these exciting programs and development. Uh, DDS will be providing updates and additional information as each progresses. It is really important that we get the word out there so people can participate and benefit from these opportunities. We sincerely hope for maximum participation and to increase the potential for positive movement uh, within the workforce leading to improved outcomes for the people we serve. It has been a pleasure and thank you so much.